Hi, my name is Chris Phillips and I'm the president of Greening Homes. Greening Homes is a renovations company whose mandate is to minimize our environmental impact on our projects as much as possible. We've recently been retained on an exciting new project in East York. It's an attempt to reach Passive House standard on an East York bungalow, a 1950s uh, existing building. My role for this project is primarily acting as a, as a project manager, keeping track of the budget, uh, having an input on uh, various materials going into the project, and also offering some of my expertise in building science and also sustainable building. And design. Hi, I'm Stephen Gray. I'm one of the construction managers at Greening Homes. What's really interesting about this project is the long-term outlook that the owners have because they plan to occupy the house for the rest of their lives. We're aiming to achieve passive house standards. So this means an ultra low energy demand for the house, so much so that you don't even require a conventional heating system. This is achieved through super high insulation levels, high performance windows, a very tight building envelope, mechanical ventilation with heat recovery and very efficient lighting systems and uh, domestic hot water. The passive house standard is an incredible challenge and it's going to be up to Stephen and the Greening Homes team uh, to ensure that uh, we build with extreme diligence, with extreme attention to detail. At Greening Homes we, we really like to be involved in the design process for our projects. We really feel that an integrated design process is the key to a successful uh, high performance, high quality building product at the end. For this project, we were able to participate in a design charrette. What is a design charrette? Well, imagine that you as the client to have an idea of, of something that you'd like to achieve, but you don't know exactly what the steps are to achieve it. A design charrette is basically getting together a whole bunch of experts in the building, um, building field. So you've got your architects, your designers, your energy modelers, your constructor, and just laying out a whole bunch of different ideas out on the table and letting those experts in the field discuss with each other uh, just different approaches to basically make that dream become reality. And that's why a design charrette, um, particularly for trying to achieve something like Passive House, is just so extremely important. Hello, my name is Andrew Hellebust, and I live here with my wife, Maria Reedstra, and our two children, Eric, who's 12, and Lila, who's 6. We've had this house for uh, over, just over 10 years, and as our, our son approaches teenagerdom, um, we thought it'd be good to have a second bedroom or a third bedroom. Our basic requirements are not many. We want uh, another bedroom. We want a little more space for a grand piano. Basically, in this design trip, everything was out on the table. We don't know exactly what the building envelope is going to be built out of. We don't know what the walls are going to be built out of. We have to consider these drawings still flexible because this is the first time I've really gotten this expertise around the table to say that, I don't know, we need more windows in the south or we need such and such an insulation. You have a 50 year outlook for your building, which is kind of important to keep in mind of where we're aiming at. Um, that you want to minimize your energy use, that you want to include the intangible things in a building. They're actually very tangible, they're just unseen. <laughs> um, but emphasis on function and also carrying costs, and then you spoke a bunch about insulation and a little bit about drainage. In the, this design chart we talked about some really interesting state-of-the-art uh, materials, super energy efficient materials, some of them coming from abroad Europe. We talked about vacuum insulated window glazing. We talked about magnesium oxide uh, structural insulated panels. So this was the first super insulated, air sealed, heat recovery ventilated building in the world. Our experience with our panels as they are is that they, they're covered in snow for some days, days at a time in the winter, and in the summer there's just more heat than we can ever use. So if we could actually favor a winter orientation that sheds snow, it would be good. Existing, okay, in the basement, uh, you'll see uh, existing walls to remain are in grey and walls to be demolished are dashed. One, one thing I've never felt was resolved in our project so far was how to insulate this building. A simple question of you have this okay. old building with brick walls, do you insulate on the inside, do you insulate on the outside? So extending the insulation from the outside down uh, to the bottom would give you also more space inside the basement. Yeah. Awesome. It fixes the leak. It, yes. it allows you to not do it, saves you a ton of money of having to redo the basement. But you could still do it on the east side if you can get permission from your neighbor to dig a trench on the yeah. property. Fill it with uh, foam in place insulation and then a layer of hardy board on the outside with an airspace behind the hardy board. And 
and uh, manufacturers of uh, foam in place insulation say that it will seal perfectly and make your air barrier, vapor barrier, everything all in one, just fill the entire cavity with it and, and that's it. Saying to everybody I'm going to build the first passive house in, in Canada. And I came back and started modeling, and then it wasn't long after that that I realized I wasn't going to build the first house <laughs> in Canada. Because it was almost cartoony, the amount of insulation I had to have. And, and so there's, there's a fine line between what's reasonable, it's maybe not even a fine line, a very well defined line, and what's going too far for the sake of procuring that, 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 that certificate. So Andrew, we're going to be uh, doing exterior insulation here. So I think definitely either removing or cutting back this uh, attached garage wall is a great idea because it's going to allow us to run our insulation uh, in a continuous layer all yeah. the way around your building. Why did we choose Greening Homes? They know a lot about all sorts of building techniques and, and are up on the latest um, techniques to uh, source things locally to have the lowest greenhouse gas impact. And I think uh, choosing them uh, took, uh, took the onus off us to research all this stuff and impose it on a builder because we were confident that they would choose the right materials, that we didn't have to go after them to choose them. And I really like that um, they have a well-educated team that is eager to participate in the design process. And one thing that was discussed extensively in the charrette was whether this bedroom over the garage was a good idea. Um, bedrooms over garages are often a problem because they have five exterior faces and so they're, all, they're often a problem to heat and uh, there's all, often a comfort issue with them being too cold. Uh, another, another point that came up was that the cost of building this one room is going to be it's going to be quite high as compared to the rest of the house. So I think uh, after the charrette, uh, Andrew and Maria decided that, that they didn't need this extra space. So there's been some ideas in the past five minutes about, well, remove the garage and create better side yard access, remove that wall on the uh, west side so that it can be moved back from the property line. And how much do we need to retain? 50%? Okay. You know, at a certain point, you've got a new house. In the design charrette, we also discussed um, whether the renovations were so extensive that it would make more sense to entirely demolish the existing building and construct from new. It's, it's um, something shocking psychologically about just throwing something away. Um, but I think, um, you know, economically, e economics isn't always uh, psychologically uh, co coherent. Working with the existing housing stock, figuring out solutions with the existing housing stock is, is where we have to go collectively because that's where the big problem lies at every level, residential, commercial, industrial. Um, but no one's come up with the perfect way of doing that right now. In my opinion, I, I would, uh, I think we have a very sound musical structure. Uh, the shape of it is, is good. It, it does a lot in terms of maximizing to the property line. I know I've argued about the, the rebuild. I've made some perhaps compelling arguments about rebuilding, but and that's kind of where my head is at, but my heart is really with the retrofit. And having done the retrofit and put money into it, I'm happy with the results. The house is super comfortable. Um, and in the hands of a capable contractor, you will get there. In the end, we decided to that it was worth keeping the existing structure because uh, it's a sound masonry structure and that we would just build new from the second story level up. We're incredibly excited at Greening Homes to be working with a client who is committed to such an incredible standard such as Passive House and allowing us to build for them a home that will last uh, for their lifetime and be relevant for generations to come.